Hey everyone, if you've seen those page a day calendars before, then you'll know the look that we're gonna go for with today's JSON formatting sample. Now this thing is a really slick looking formatter. It looks great and you could create this yourself. So let's jump in and see how this thing works, where it comes from and how it works. So I'm on my example site right now. I'm just going to go into site pages and we can show what this thing's going to do. All we really need for this is a date column. And here you see what this thing is going to end up looking like. It looks awesome to tell you the truth. It has a very familiar look. You can use this for like the first published date like I've done here or any other type of date column. If you just want something to kind of pop out and stand out to users so that they could see at a glance what that date is. And it's certainly a nice change from the standard date format that you see over to the left with for the created column. Let's delete this thing and walk through how it is set up. So I've got the column reset and you know, maybe we just don't even reuse this at all. Let me go ahead and just hide this column and we'll just set this up for the created column. That's something we probably use a lot more than first published date, but you could use this on any kind of date column. All we're going to do is we're going to hit the drop down menu on the header, go to column settings and format this column. We'll go into advanced mode where our JSON is. And now we need the JSON to copy in here. Now this sample comes from the date page a day calendar sample from the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community, formerly known as the PNP community GitHub site. There's a link down in the description below for this, as well as some other helpful links to get you started with JSON formatting or continue you along in the journey. So you'll see a screenshot of what this thing looks like. You'll see any sort of view requirements right now. There's not any. Um, all you need is a date column. You'll see who created this. And then up here in the top, you'll see the JSON link. So this is actually what's going to create that whole JSON solution. We're going to come back to this and walk through how this thing works. But for now, all we're going to do is hit this copy raw file button. We'll go back in here and select all this existing JSON, which is really just the schema that's being referenced. And we're going to paste in that JSON and hit save. That's it. Voila, it works. It really couldn't be simpler than that. We can close this and if you hit refresh, it's all still going to come right back. So this is a really, really fast solution that you can deploy to something. Something just to you know, maybe jazz things up a bit. You could take this and add something to your internet homepage that displays this kind of date format. So just because it's a column formatter, don't think that there's not benefits for like a view type of experience. You could just have a view with a couple of fields, maybe uh, the, maybe the title field and then this date column. And you can make something nice on your internet homepage or some other site page doing this. So this is kind of getting you started with this. But let's jump into this JSON and actually talk about how this thing works. Uh, most of it's very simple. Uh, there's one part that is interesting. So let's let's switch over to that. So with any type of JSON formatter, we're always, always, always going to start with this JSON object and we're going to reference the schema. The schema is going to tell you what rules have to be followed. Um, it's also going to tell SharePoint how this needs to be applied. Um, in this case, a column formatter. We're creating a div to house everything. We're using a flex layout here with a column as the direction. So it's just going to flow downward, which makes sense because if you switch back over to here, you'll see these are just elements that are stacking vertically on top of each other. So they're in a column layout, really. You'll see we're using the display CSS property so that if we have a value, it sets it to the flex layout. Otherwise, it sets it to none, which just hides it. That's it. So if we don't have a value, we're not going to display anything at all for that particular row. Then we get into the children array. So these are all the things that are going to be inside this div, inside our container, if you will. And the first thing we're displaying is just the year. We're using an expression and the get year function, passing in that particular date field, and it just spits out the date. We can see that at the top of the output. So that's where we get that from. We're using the attributes property so that we can set the theme colors so that it matches the rest of our SharePoint site. This next part is where things get real, real fancy because this next section is where we're displaying the day of the week. If you've seen the normal date format, 
in SharePoint. It's really just numeric. It didn't have the day of the week in there. So there's a calculation that has to be done. And you'll see that calculation here on line 36. This is an extremely long, I'll scroll over so you can see it, expression. In my opinion, don't even bother trying to understand what this is. This is something known as, actually I've already forgot the name of this thing, let me go back here, because the uh, author did reference it, Zeller's Congruence. And this was a calculation that was determined apparently in the 19th century. So it was a calculation just to determine what the day of the week would be for any given date. So the author of this plugin found a way to take that complicated formula and make it work with the constraints of SharePoint JSON formatting expressions. So that's what you see here. And what this really does is, if we look at this whole block here, we're doing a for each up at the div layer. And this is going to basically repeat this for every single day of the week. In every one of these displays, you're gonna have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're gonna have the you're gonna have all the days of the week. But only one is displayed, and that's where that display property is down here. If the calculation determines that the current day that we're looping through is going to be displayed, then the display property turns that on. Otherwise, it hides that whole div so that no one sees it. For such a complicated formula, the author did a really nice job in figuring out how to make this work efficiently within SharePoint. You also see the attributes property here. Again, setting the, the theme colors for the font, the font weight. But then down below that, we're displaying the month and the date. And those are much, much simpler uh, displays here. We're just using the get month function in an expression to see is it January, February, March, and so on, and setting that to the text output. Again, setting the attributes so that we have a consistent theme experience. And then finally, again, the date at the bottom, just the numeric date. And that's really it for this. Now, this is a really cool sample and, and a very simple sample, aside from that whole Zeller's congruence thing. Um, I don't even want to think about how that one works. But besides that, this is a really simple example, but it's very flashy. It makes the text really jump out on the page um, so that you can grab someone's attention. They're not having to read through too much data on that screen to know what that date really is. So I think this was a really cool example. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And while you're at it, let me know what you think of this style of video. I'm using ClipChamp, which is kind of that new video editor uh, solution from Microsoft. So I'm able to do the picture in picture. I don't know. Do you like it? Do you not like it? It's a little different. So let me know uh, if you want me to just keep using this style format so that you could always see me talking even when I'm doing a uh, screen share. Let me know and I'll see you on the next one.